In this episode, we show you how to install the CPU and the heatsink. You're watching IT Pro TV. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for tuning in to more of the hands-on PC build. That's right. In this episode, we're going to be installing two things, the CPU and the heatsink. Let's take a look at what we got here. First things first, we do want to install the CPU, but before we do, we got to do some minor um, mounting of the heat sink and a couple of plates that need to go on before we even bring the CPU in. And what we're going to be using here is the Cooler Master. This is the uh, Hyper 212 EVO, uh, and we've kind of got an unboxing going on here, and you can kind of see the parts and the components uh, that are here. We have our uh, um, warranty information. We've got our user manual. Uh, there's actually a little bit of thermal compound that they gave us, a couple of bracketing mounts, because this works for Intel chips as well as it works for AMD chips. Got a series of uh, the bolts and screws, got the little uh, mounting bracket that's actually going to sit under the heat pipes on the CPU and actually bolt it to the uh, motherboard. Uh, and then here's the, the, the mounting plate that we have to install on the back of the motherboard. So we actually have to flip the motherboard over in order to get this to work. So before we start doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a couple of these pieces to the side because uh, anybody that knows me that knows I was born with two left feet, I'll probably knock something over here. So uh, we'll go ahead and just kind of set some of this stuff to the side, give ourselves a little bit more working room. And what I want to talk about first is uh, mounting this this back plate here. Uh, this back plate actually sits uh, on the back of the motherboard and um, that's going to help us to attach that to the motherboard. So uh, first things first, we're going to work with these bolts here and these little cups. And what you do here is you're actually going to take this bolt and you're going to kind of thread it through that cup and it should just kind of snap in place. You can see it's kind of seated there uh, and the threaded post is over here. Uh, now, at this point, what we're going to do is we're going to take our motherboard and uh, we're going to look for a couple of pre-drilled holes. You'll see if I kind of move this up, you can see there's four holes around the, the base of this uh, C or the perimeter of this CPU. And that's what we're looking for. And in order to do this, what you're going to do is you're going to actually drop the first one in here uh, and then you can hold that in and turn the motherboard over. And let me kind of hold that and see where you can see that that's actually kind of protruding right there and then at this point we're going to take our uh, back plate here and just gently kind of just move it a little bit uh, these uh, machine threads uh, might be a little bit tight you don't want to put any force there and you also want to make sure that it's in the right mounting position and for the 1151 uh, socket that we have here it's going to be the middle post position and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to just kind of thread this just a little bit, not much, but just a little bit to get it started. And then what we'll do is we'll turn this motherboard back over and you can see that we've got the first post started. Now, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'll install the other three posts and when we come back, we're gonna move into the next step. All right, welcome back. So we went ahead, we've got the uh, back plate uh, tightened up here, and let me show you what I did in order to get that accomplished here. Uh, one of the things that uh, you have to do is you have to make sure that when you, just finger tight when you put these on, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take this little, uh, it, it's kind of like a socket on one side. It's a little tool they give you with the Cooler Master, a little Phillips head uh, screwdriver, or even standard screwdriver really on the other side. And what you can do is you can just put that in place, and it's kind of like a socket set. And what you do is you tighten that side of it up and then you do a uh, kind of like a cross pattern, almost like putting on uh, your, you know, a tire if you're changing your tire. And then we go ahead and do it in a star pattern. We tighten this side up and then we'll come over here and we'll tighten this side up. We make sure that it's tightened down and then this side and we'll do the same thing here and we'll tighten this side down. And then there we go. You don't have to put a lot of pressure on there. Uh, it doesn't really take much. And then we'll go ahead and we'll flip it over. And now you'll notice that we have our four posts ready to go. And it's time to move on to uh, the next component. Uh, and, but before we do that, one of the things that you might notice uh, over here on my tech cam is that we do have a little, uh, a few components left over. And I just want to kind of address that so you don't think, oh, what did I do wrong? You, you, you didn't do anything wrong. 
Uh, notice that this uh, ha has no fan on this side. Well, these plastic rails are actually so that you can attach, if you wanted to, another fan. Uh, so you could have two fans on the each side of this Cooler Master. Uh, so I'm going to bring out our little Cooler Master uh, uh, box here, and we're going to just set these to the side for now. Uh, these are the screws, that, and I'm going to keep them around in case we decide that maybe we want uh, additional an additional fan put on here. Uh, so definitely save these. We'll put these to the side. Now these other four bolts, uh, again, you didn't do anything wrong or screws, if you will. Uh, this is for a different type uh, of socket than the one that we have on this motherboard. Uh, I believe it's for a 2011 socket. Uh, so this, uh, we're going to go ahead and we'll put these to the side. And uh, for now, we don't really need this little tool here that we used. So we'll put that there uh, as well. Uh, I told you that we weren't going to use the um, thermal compound that came with it. Uh, if you remember, one of the things we said uh, for our components is we're going to be using Arctic Silver. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put those to the side as well. So that's got the next stage ready, and now really what's time, what, what it comes time to do uh, is really bring this guy he, up to the uh, table here, uh, and that is our i5 processor, uh, and you can kind of see this is what we got here. We've got one of our ninth gen processors here, uh, and it's time to put this into the motherboard. Uh, we went ahead, and uh, while we were um, taking care of that back plate, uh, I went ahead and unboxed the processor here. We've got our processor right there, uh, and um, you might have noticed uh, or, that we've got a, a massive heat sink. All right, this is the stock in Intel uh, heat sink that comes with it. Uh, we're not going to be using the stock heat sink. We're going to be using this aftermarket, try to get a little bit uh, more cooling. I will tell you, though, there's nothing wrong with these. Uh, these are actually relatively easy to install by comparison to the Cooler Master. Uh, but what, what I'm trying to achieve here is to get a little bit better cooling out of the bigger um, uh, heat sink. Uh, so that is the next step here, and in order to do this, what we need to do is we need to prepare the motherboard uh, and the CPU uh, and get it ready uh, to first drop the CPU in, and then we have to install our thermal compound. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to clean our bench up, and when we come back, we'll move on to that step. All right, so here we go. It's uh, time to go ahead and put our CPU in here, and we're going to start right here on the motherboard because we have to take off a dust cover uh, that's on the motherboard to start with, and very easy to do this. It's just a little plastic piece, and you've got a little remove lever. You just pull it off. That's all it is. We're just going to set that to the side. Now, something I want you to pay close attention to is th there's this little triangle right here you'll notice that is important uh, to remember that triangle. And I'll show you in a second. This uh, little latch is the next thing that we're going to do. And what we're going to do is just kind of pull that latch back. The latch will come up. You'll notice that the whole entire cover slides back. And what we're going to do is just lift this socket cover, the LGA socket cover, up. Now, again, I want you to pay attention. Remember that the triangle was up here on this side of the processor uh, socket. And if we take a look at our processor itself, what we're searching for is that little golden triangle. And you can see it down here in the bottom here. Uh, and there are a couple of notches on the top of this processor. That lets us know how we're going to line it up. We're going to put that triangle in the same position that we see it uh, on the socket. And they do that, again, to denote what's known as pin one. So the next thing I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm just going to open our CPU here and be very, very mindful of not trying to touch uh, the, the top of this at all or touch uh, any of the uh, circuitry. I'm just holding it by, uh, and let me show you here on the tech cam real quick, um, just holding it on the side so that we don't actually touch anything. Now. We got to be very careful with this. We want to make sure it's uh, there is no force that is needed. It is literally just setting it down into its seat. So let's go ahead and we're going to do exactly that. We're going to find our triangle, which is up towards the front. And we're just going to lay this right down in. And you'll notice it fits right in place. It's snug. It doesn't have, take any force at all. Remember, our triangle is up there. It's where it needs to be. It's ready to go. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take this socket cover. We're going to uh, just pull it back down, make sure it lines up with this little bolt here. And we're just going to go ahead and we're going to force this back down. And with a little bit of pressure, 
we're going to lock this CPU in place. Now, our CPU is locked in place. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take that little bit of thermal compound that we had mentioned, and we're just going to put a little bit of thermal compound right on the top of the CPU. And there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. Some people talk about doing a line or an X or smearing it. I'm going to go with the tried and true method of really just putting a pea size dot right in the middle. We just want to make sure that there's just enough to cover the cores of the CPU. So you'll notice I'm just going to put a little pea size dot and I kind of just pulled it off to the side because this stuff, boy, I tell you what, when this stuff gets uh, on some things, it certainly can get very messy and we don't want to uh, have that hit any bit of the motherboard and we don't want to get down to the sides of the die of the chip. Remember that uh, Arctic, Sil Arctic Silver is electrically conductive and it could, uh, it could short out. So you have to be very careful with the uh, thermal compound. Now, the next thing that we have to do is we have to set up to put our bracket in place. And what you have to do is we have to kind of thread this through here. And then when we do that, we're gonna line it up and we're gonna go ahead and mount it finally. And we'll screw the heat sink on and we'll have our processor installed. All right, ladies and gentlemen, last thing that we have to do is actually mount the heat sink down onto the top of the CPU. Uh, and if we look at our tech cam here, you can see that we went ahead and we took the brace and we've uh, already put it underneath uh, the heat sink and just above uh, the metal plate that attaches to the, uh, or will um, uh, snug up against the CPU. And then it's just a matter of taking your screws, lining them up, and then just tightening them in kind of like an X pattern here, uh, just like we did when we did the bottom plate. That That'll be important. And again, you can just keep doing little turns there, just little turns back uh, in that uh, that star pattern. Just again, like kind of like you're changing a tire, uh, and just work through it until they tighten up good. Uh, it looks like these are uh, these are good and tight and ready to go. Uh, and then there you have it. You have your heat sink is mounted. Uh, if it gives you a little bit of a problem, that's okay. Just kind of bear with it. Just finger tighten them if you have uh, if you have to when you start. Again, this is a multi vendor heat sink, so it works on AMD and Intel. And then one of the last things that we're going to do is we're just going to take this fan and we're going to put it back into its original position and just a little bit of a uh, clip here and it should fit right into place and I went ahead and what I did is I tied a little knot in this uh, for a little bit better cable management and what that'll help you do is when you plug this into the uh, the system board when we do our uh, connections later on uh, it'll make sure that there's not a lot of slack there but there you go you can see we now have our cooler master heat sink on top of our i5 processor so in this episode that's one of the things we wanted to do it's a if it gives you a little bit of a hard time, it's okay. Just take your time. Make sure you're using good thermal compound. Uh, make sure you pay attention to the vendor's uh, specifications. And that essentially is how you install your CPU and your heat sink to keep the CPU cool. Thank you for watching IT Pro TV.